I think, man, that we should all have goals that we set for ourselves that we want to achieve. It's, it's no different than you and Taekwondo. Imagine if you were just showing up to class, bro, and you were just in there working. You know what I'm saying? No like, going, I, right. I just want to be good at this. And it wasn't be like, uh, what was the name of it? You wouldn't have no, uh, no what? Meet days, challenge day, what was it? Rank testing. Rank testing. You wouldn't have no rank testing. Imagine if you had no rank testing. And you just going in there like, dang, I want to be the best. So then when your, when your instructor call you back at the class, there is no like, oh, we need to go another 30 minutes to make sure you get this move down. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? There is no like, oh, no, it's just we can keep going and going and going and going and going because it's really nothing that we aiming for. Yeah. Instead of saying like, oh, no, you got a rank test. You no need purpose. To be, yeah. You, you need to have a purpose over why you're doing it. This is your rank test coming up. You need to be ready for that coming up. Yeah. So it's no different than your goal. Hey, bro, you know, if you said that your goal was to do these things, as long as you achieving that goal, bro, then you within the ball game. What's going on, y'all? It's Coach Willis, man, and this is the Be Easy Show, man. You know on the Be Easy Show, man, we cover topics about success. We learned about why success is personal, what success means to a community, right? And what is the driving force that makes us wake up every single day and go after the things that we want in our life. This is the Be Easy Show, man, so be easy. What's going on, y'all? It's Coach Willis, man. And we are back, joined by the one and only Zyla himself. Hey. You know, this is the Be Easy Show, man. We coming up with topics every single episode, man. Trying to help you live your life easier than you did the last time, man. So, we just appreciate y'all tuning in, man. And you already know, man. Like, subscribe, comment, man. And just share the podcast, man. But we hope y'all enjoy, man. Uh, I think you want to take the floor this week. I mean, you always usually hit me. You ain't asked me how my week was, man. No, no, no. I was going to... I, I say disrespected me. <laughs> Better ask me how oh, my so week now, was. Now, now you're ready for me to ask you. I mean, yeah, man. All right, then. No, yeah. I just, Tell I the people week. how your week was. Bro, I've been, I just been tired, but I, I splurged this week, bro. Splurge. Splurge. Tell us. I usually just be drinking a lot of water, bro. Mm -hmm. I got the Minute Maid oh. in a carton. <laughs> I got the Minute Maid in a carton, bro. Oh, you know man. that's good. The gallon one? Nah, no, man. You're talking in the about, carton. Oh, okay. I know. Which like one. in the little, little pint size. Yeah, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one you get? Tropical Punch. Ah, okay. It's either okay. Tropical Punch yeah. or that Fruit Punch. Yep. yep. Where you make it ice cold. Yep. Boy. I don't know. Did you used to drink the grape? Yeah. Oh, okay. Bro, any of them in a carton? Yeah. It's a done Spire. deal. Done Fire. Deal. I don't like the one in the plastic <laughs> jugs. Those is nasty. That's what I was about to ask. Like, hold on, bro. You tripping. Mm. Like, you must like like them, man. Nah, like, cause it tastes it tastes totally different than yeah. that plastic carton. I wouldn't doubt it, bro. I or wouldn't doubt it. Plastic jug. I yeah. ain't drinking out no jug. <laughs> <laughs> they don't sell, man. Them things nah. don't sell. Not compared to what the cards do, man. Carton flying off the shelf. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. Even the oat milk coming in a carton. So they would know. you do that just to treat yourself? Yeah, bro. I was up at Winco. Hungry, mm -hmm. and it's right next to the oat milk. Well, yeah. It's right. It's in the dairy section. So yeah. I was like, "All right, I got to get some oat milk." And I saw it. It was just calling me. Got to get it. Like you know, on the commercials, you it. see like the beam coming out of the mugs. Yeah. It was like a beam <laughs> coming spotlight out, on it. Yeah, out the cooler. And I was like, "Minute man, I like, gotta I, get it." Start rubbing my hands like bird man. Like I'm about to, I'm about to go ahead and go get on. it. Not even worried about the price. Just gonna go ahead and check out with this. Nah, man, you know that minute may be dirt cheap. Oh yeah. <laughs> Only thing cheaper is that Highland drink. <laughs> that Highland juice be dirty oh, too. Oh my goodness! Man. Uh, some Tampico. Are you talking about the uh, the one that's just grape drink? Yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I already know, now, man. It's by Highland. Oh yeah, I, I already Super know. Super cheap. Oh that's man, that's just straight sugar water. Oh man, that oh, might be my grandparents' house. Uh, buy it up for the cookout. Yeah, people gonna drink it. <laughs> Got the nerve to dilute it. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, yeah, but as long as I didn't even know, bro, that they had a, uh, that they was actually like flavors. I mean, we didn't call the purple one the purple drink, but were they though? It was like the, pink lemonade <laughs> that had flavor, <laughs> and they had the fruit punch, bro. We like just, they all kind of it was just the, the same, bro. I'm telling you, we just it used to be the pink drink, yeah, the red drink, purple, purple drink, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's why I was like for the longest I didn't even. I was like. And each joint's like they actually call by the name of their flavors and stuff. I didn't even, I didn't even know people was doing that, man. Do a blindfold taste test. You're not gonna know. Oh no, not at all. I man. think I would be able to tell the pink. That's about it. The yeah, rest I couldn't tell. A lot of them was just they, they watered down. I ain't gonna lie. It's just sugar water, mm -hmm. pretty much. Throw some color in there. <laughs> <laughs> Red. Make do, man. Yeah, man. Oh man, yep. so it's been splurge. Super, what else went tired. on? 
I just been tired. Like yeah. I just been having to train because you know I'm like doing all this other stuff behind the scenes to try yeah. and just get my footing. I was gonna skip a rank test for yeah. martial arts. Masters was like, yeah, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> You're not skipping. Oh, y'all disrespecting me now. It, that's pretty much what it was like. I was yeah. I told him that night, and it was like, yeah, I'm gonna skip it because I, I got my focus is it's elsewhere. They're like, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. And then like I called myself walking out of class because yep. it was over. Zyla, where are you going? Come back. Yeah. So I had to come back and train for like longer than everybody yeah. else because they want me to be ready for the rank test. Yeah. But I thought I was just going to skip. I thought it was optional. Yeah. It typically is. But they're like, you're ready. I'm like, I know I understand I'm ready, but like, I got other stuff, I got going, other on stuff right. going on. Yeah. Like, I'm busy. I'm tired. Mm. So just all this week, I just been training. Mm. I, I woke up this morning super sore. Like, what's going on? Yeah. Why am I so sore? Like muscles that like that mm-hmm. never been so sore ever, just on tens. Like I tell you what, I'm ready. I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't doubt they it. They weren't taking no for an answer. It. I talked to two of them. They was like, okay, mm-hmm. we'll see. All right. Yeah, man. I thought when you said that you were trying to skip, you were just gonna go up like another level. Like no, no, no. Ain't, you got to go yeah. to the rank test. Mm-hmm. So so tell me this, man. So what's I don't want to, I mean, I can understand, like, of course, it would help their business if y'all doing well, but, like, outside of that, what else do they get besides y'all being, you know, like, masters in this? What do you mean, what do they get? You know, like, I would understand, like, of course, with their business, like, they would get more business because people would go tell them, like, hey, I train here. Yeah. But, like, outside of that, what are they getting, you know what I'm saying, to hold you back another, like, hour to train and make sure that you're ready for this? It's just the beauty of the martial art, bro. Yeah. Under Taekwondo. So mm-hmm. it's just the beauty of the art. They love it. I love it. Yeah. I just that's why I didn't want to do it because I didn't want to disrespect it. Because like I know I'm not ready. I know I'm not focused. Mm-hmm. So let me fall back on this one because I don't have the energy to put into it. So if, when you ask like, what do they get out of it? They just get to see a, somebody coming up through the ranks. Mm-hmm. So I'm not even that high of a rank at all. Mm-hmm. I I'm a green belt. So it got like, I got to get my stripe. So it's like white, orange, green, and then you got to get mm-hmm. stripes. So it's like White, white stripe, orange, orange stripe, green, green stripe, mm. and so on and so forth. So I'm about to get my stripe. So I lost where I was going with that. But anyway, it's like a whole process of where you have to really kind of, mm. it's just hard work. Yeah. And you fall in love with it. So that's what they get out of it. It's just being able to share what they know. Like these is like fourth degree, fifth degree black belts mm. doing it all their life. Like one of them just was fresh off the boat from Vietnam. Dang. Granted, Taekwondo is Korean, mm-hmm. but like he came straight from Vietnam to train in America. So mm-hmm. it's just like, yeah, like they dedicate this whole their whole lives to the art. Yeah. So that's why I definitely didn't want to disrespect it. But that's why they were like, oh, what you talking about? That's little stuff. I came over here on a boat. Mm-hmm. Didn't know where I was going. I <laughs> <laughs> that's cute. You think you about to just skip because you got stuff going on? Yeah, man. Like they they didn't care mm. and it's kind of funny how like people always talk about asian parents it was kind of like asian parents like, like we don't care about you having this little stuff mm. you're gonna get work done Dang. And i was like all right yes sir bro i'm kind of glad that you said that man because that's what i was actually hoping that you was gonna say like they just really passionate they want to see their people do well yeah, i love it like, that's pretty much it they knew i was ready they just mm. knew i needed a little extra pushing and it was up to me to kind of allow them to like okay these are my masters let me yeah. let them push me mm. and get out of my comfort zone and that's Makes sense. that's what it is. Makes sense, man. So I like it. Dang. Plus, it's like it's nice knowing just like okay, if I need to defend my, myself, mm. we're good. Mm. Even at a green belt. So, yeah, man. I think everybody should learn a martial art, whether it's like taekwondo, jujitsu, karate, judo. Mm-hmm. Don't matter. Even boxing. I want to so learn man, boxing next. So, man, would you put this stuff out to like, you know, would you put this stuff out on like your social media? Or, like, would like you be training? telling all your, like, I mean, not you, like, training, but, like, hey, I just became a green stripe. You know what I'm saying? Nah. Um, so I said I wouldn't, really, I wouldn't really post it until I was a black belt. Mm. Then I'm going to throw it on there, like, hey, yeah. I'm a black belt. I'm a black belt. Yeah, but I don't, I don't really like advertising like that. Mm. I, like, I'm just saying it now because, like, oh, like the hard work thing and aspect of it. Yeah. I don't really like talking about it because I feel like it's, like, braggadocious. And I don't want nobody – like, people like to try people. Oh, yeah. And, like, now that I've learned how to, like, fight, I don't want to. 
bro it mm-hmm. takes so much energy mm-hmm. and like i'm a chill dude so i don't need nobody trying me because like i'm not even going to entertain it yeah so it's like that's why i don't really talk about it because makes sense i don't want to invite that into my life because i i'm just trying to chill and learn the art it's mm-hmm. an art to me i love it i'm passionate about it i'm not out here trying to street fight mm-hmm. so no, no i wouldn't sense. be like oh you're just a green belt let me try you mm-hmm. and now we got to go through this whole ordeal no that makes sense or like i'm not gonna post pictures of me like kicking stuff and things like that it's like ah. and even now it's like i don't want to do it because i'm so keen on being really good and really crisp mm-hmm. and i'm so early in the game in terms of like the art mm-hmm. i don't want to post nothing and it'd be sloppy so that's why like so. when i'm a black belt and I'll, i got it down which I, it's gonna take years before i'm a black belt but once i got it down okay now i'm more comfortable with teaching people or showing like hey i'm a black belt now mm-hmm. and it's it i'm gonna look at it as like a badge of honor for sure because like it's years of work and oh, like for i sure. had to go through so much mm-hmm. i had to like drop it last year because a lot of stuff personal stuff that went on and that hurt me so it's just a lot that goes into it and like i'm super passionate about it yeah but it's like one of those passions you don't really talk about mm. that's what's up so like these meets do you you invite like your parents to those Bro, I was, but like my parents said they 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 don't stop coming, which I understand it because like we be sparring and be fighting, mm-hmm. and sometimes you got to fight two people at once and stuff like that. Yeah. And as you get upper in ranks, you got to fight like five people at once. Dang. Yeah. So and like I'm like so last rank test, I had to spar with like a black belt mm-hmm. and dude whooped me, mm-hmm. and like pops was not having it. He was <laughs> he was out there watching. He was upset, yeah. but it was just like I was out there. So I had a smile on my face the whole time getting whooped, mm-hmm. but it's just like. You can invite people. You can invite whoever you want, but I yeah. don't really invite people. And it kind of goes on like what I was just saying. I don't really like to present things until I'm like for sure crisp for sure. So I was only inviting my parents, and like now that they don't want to come, I'm not gonna really tell nobody. Mm-hmm. So this is probably like the first time people know. Like, oh, he does taekwondo. He kicking butt out here. <laughs> no, not even like, bro. I'm I am a computer uh. hacker. That is what I do. Mm-hmm. That's just I, That's I like it. people to look. Like, oh, he's just a computer hacker. We gonna we chilling. For sure, fine For with sure. me. I ain't mad at you, man. I ain't mad at you. Yeah. I think it, I think it's good. I like the yeah. the beauty about it, man. It's not even just that, but I like the dedication that you have for it. And it's like outside of you just being better at it. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Outside of you just being better at it, there's really like no other reward for it. You know what I'm saying? Like you're not getting the monetary gain because no, like no, it's like all within. Yeah, you have to abandon all that. Oh, you're gonna be, you're gonna be this, you're gonna be that. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm gonna beat up everybody. You, oh, I'm gonna be the best. You get rid of all that. It's a very, very humbling thing to yeah. learn a martial art. That's why I want to learn multiple because it's just like you put yourself in these different situations, and mm-hmm. a lot of people think they can fight. But yeah. Once you put in a situation where you have to fight. In this side, certain type of way, it's very, very humbling. Like, oh, yeah. oh, I don't know what I'm doing. And even now, like, if I were like fight a boxer, a boxer gonna beat the brakes off me because mm. it's just a totally different world. So just mm. learning how to fight correctly, yeah, is very, uh, it's a very humbling but rewarding experience. I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it, man. I just like, man, because all in all, man, this this is gonna roll over for you in other areas of your life. Oh, it already has. Yeah. It's definitely made me a much more calmer person, even mm-hmm. though like I was super chill to begin with, but I'm way more calmer now. Yeah. And it's just, you look at things totally different and your dedication to certain things is totally different. You just realize like, it helped me realize what really matters and what I'm really, uh, really willing to put my time into. For sure. For sure. So it's eye opening. That's why I'm always telling people like, hey man, go join the gym. Mm. Whether if you're interested in like boxing or taekwondo, or whatever. Yeah. Just go learn something. You ain't got to do it all your life, but like a year of training, mm-hmm. it'll change a lot of people. Wouldn't doubt it, man. Go ahead, Wouldn't man. Come on. Come on. Come through. I may have to, man. I may have to. When you got some time. Yeah, I may have to, man. I'll I'll show like you some it. stuff. Hmm. I said, I'll show you some stuff because I teach white belts. So, mm. well, I help teach white belts. I don't teach the class, but I help. Yeah. So, yeah, man. That's what's up, man. I don't know. I think. The biggest thing, well, man, for me, I think the biggest thing would be getting like the fundamentals down. Like if I could stand on something, then that'd be the biggest thing, man. I can grow from there. Yeah. But I'll try it though, man. I like it like the rollover aspect. That was like me, like with the church, man. Especially because I was doubting the church at the beginning. 
I was not for that joint at all. I know. I was like, not, I've known you for a while. So when you were telling me about the church, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I was not for it at all, bro. But the the things it is opened me up to now, man, it's like it's in ways that I would never even think that the church was helping in that way. And I don't know if it was really the church or if it was me opening up to doing those type of things. But, yeah, it's it's, it's rolled over in a lot of other areas. Like, I thought I was patient, bro. Like, I really thought I was patient. Like, before I got into the church, I thought I was able to, like, calm myself. But then I was, like, I was understanding, like, I really wasn't patient. I was taking my anger and just balling that joint up and putting it, yeah. like, in my back pocket. Yes. You know That's, what I'm that saying? That was another outlet for Taekwondo for me because, yeah. like, I was holding on to a lot of anger, and it's just a real good stress relief. Mm-hmm. But go ahead. Oh, yeah. No, that was the same with me, man. I just figured out how to, like, channel it differently and not use it in a way that was, like, destructive. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Where it wasn't, like, yelling at somebody. It wasn't, like, cussing at somebody. Or even, like, now, like, I'll go on a, on a walk, man, and I'll go talk to God on these walks. And it's maybe this is just me. Maybe everybody won't do this, but I just go at the beginning like, "Hey God, I'm angry," and I just express while I'm ang- while I'm angry, yeah, and let it let it all off my chest, man. And then after that, I just listen. And one of the things that it taught me, like, like I said, man, with patience, man, is it taught me like, you know, what I'm saying I'm speaking for me. I don't want nobody to get offended, but I'm speaking for me. Like when I hear about when like like God don't work on Isaiah's time. You know what I'm saying? Like he don't work on my time. So like if I if I go out there and I'm like, hey, I'm angry, and I start telling them all the things I'm going through, and I want the stuff solved, obviously right after, right? ASAP. But I just like, look, man, this thing might take a few days. Like you know what I'm saying before anything come to me. You know what I'm saying before anything finally clicks and it, it finally makes sense. Cause it was several things. Man, I remember for uh, the longest man, like when I first got into uh, college, I was like, hey, God, man, show me. Why I need to be up in this joint. I wasn't even going to church. I was just like, I was reading my Bible. I was reading the Quran. I was reading the teachings of Buddha. I was reading the, I think it's like the the Vita or the Veda, whatever, man. My bad if I'm disrespecting that. It's one of them. But you know what I'm talking about though, right? Yeah. But it was like all like I was I was reading like all religions, man. All like spiritual texts. I was reading all that. But I remember at the For what? For myself. So for selfish reasons. Yeah, but not for selfish reasons, so I can be like, man, you know, I'm I'm coming to God like, hey, God, I need this. But I remember, like, I didn't want to, and maybe it's it's always been like this with me, man. I've never always wanted to just do one thing and just go into that one thing without at least looking at what the other things have to offer. You know what I'm saying? So, like, when it came to that, like, I was like, man, I'm at least read the Quran. You know what I'm saying? Especially, this was my thing, was was that I was always against religion. Any of that stuff? Hit your knee. Boy, about to nah. die. hit that ankle. Ah, uh, Put on that little paw right there. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'll be feeling that, man. Go, go ahead, man. I, yeah. I tried to keep it low-key. No, no, you, you good, but man. You good. I, I got my thought there. But I was so against religion at the beginning, bro, because, you know, like, people say, hey, religion is like, that's the way that the government, that's the way they control the people and, you know, religion creates all wars and look at ISIS and all these other things like religion is no good and all that stuff. And I was just like, okay, man, well, I'm going to go figure out what this stuff is for me before I let it, somebody else do it. Yeah. That's why I was so skeptical about going to a church, going to a mosque, going to a temple, going to any of these you things. You wanted to read it for yourself and interpret it yourself first. Yeah, before yeah. I sit in somebody's congregation and the pastor t- telling me, oh, all Muslims are crazy. And I go to a mosque. All Christians are crazy. You know what I'm saying? Before I start going, I was like, hold on, man. Let me figure out what this joint is. And I was like, oh, okay. I was reading the uh, Quran, man. And when I was reading that, I was like, man, it's a whole lot of truth up in this joint, right? But the reason why I would never, I can't say never, but the reason why at the moment, like, I wouldn't, like, follow Islam is because... Like at the moment, I know like the discipline that you have to to be a true Muslim. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Is like I'm not at that point right now. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I'm not at that point. What I what I like this is the crazy thing. Like I know I'm getting raised sidetrack right now, but this is the crazy thing about like even when it comes to like uh, Islam, is that they do the five. They pray five times a day, right? Yeah. And they do those set times a day. That's five times a day, and 
I remember I was just thinking to myself because I was like, man, there's no way I could ever pray five times a day. Like, I, I could not do that, bro. Like, actually, like, devote time to be like, bro, look, I'm stopping everything. I used to work with this dude, man. He was a Muslim. And I'm talking about he would just leave. Just be gone, bro. Like, I mean, of course, he did it first when he woke up. Like, in the middle of the day, just disappear. Lunchtime, disappear. And then after that, like, right before we was probably about to disappear again. Where is dude at? And you would find him in the parking lot on his mat, bro, like praying. And I was like, man, the devotion to that stuff. But I was like, man, there's no way I could pray five times a day. And then you look at it and you like, oh, well, if you pray at the beginning of the day, okay, that's one. If you Christian, whoever, if you pray at the beginning of the day, that's one. You pray at breakfast, if you eat breakfast, that's two times, right? Mm -hmm. You pray at noontime, like that's the middle of the day. And even if, like, I wouldn't like, Support you eating three meals a day, but your average diet, let's say you're doing it. So you pray in the morning, right when you wake up. We'll come back to that. Yeah, yeah we will. We go will. Ahead. But you you wake up in the morning, you pray. Your three meals, right, that I'm still not supporting that you do, but your three meals, now you have four. That's four times you can pray, and you pray again before you go to bed. That's five prayers. Whether you're a Christian, whoever, anything, I was like, man, like, I don't think I'm giving myself enough credit and i'm like i'm discounting myself from doing things before i even allow myself the chance to do them you know and like i was just like that's why i was just like you know i'm not that devoted and i was reading all these other books man and everything now let me circle this thing back to where i was at hey, you always have a way of doing yeah, it that surprises I'm, I'm me i'm circling I'm, I'm it back now cook, man. but uh that's why because i was reading all these things man i remember i came to god man at the beginning when i first got to road state and i was asking like man hey and this was at the beginning. This was like when I didn't, I thought I needed, like I thought I had patience, but I didn't have patience. I was like, hey, God, I'm in college. I'm not really for college. I feel like it's a scam. They're taking my money. You know, like am I even going to be able to get a job when I get out of here? You were on tickets to Rose. Yeah, yeah, I know. What money are they taking? <laughs> what are you talking about? I know, man. I know. They taking this $100 know, from I me. I got to buy it. Like, what? I was the privileged kid screaming about not being privileged, man. Hey, it was man, crazy. First world problems, man. Yeah, I know. I know. I mean, the tickets are rose. It, it helped me a lot. Oh man, it was game changer oh, for sure. Even though, even I though I don't, I don't have it. They, I did. I didn't they have snatched it that mug from me. Oh, I lost real the first quick. semester. Me too. Yeah, it was gone. Done. I, I don't know. I never clocked my my community. I was doing community service. Didn't clock that joint. Then when I tried oh. to go back and double back and clock it, they was like, "Yeah, we don't approve if you work at those places." For real? Yeah, they yeah. have a select. Thing that you're supposed to go work at. I was, I know, I did it, but yeah. like they accepted mine. I'm not going to, I'm oh, not no, going to get into the, mine. Yeah, we ain't going to talk about those yeah. activities oh, or okay. how yeah, I got yeah, those yeah, yeah, service yeah, hours. Sure. But, but you, you we, did the work. We got the, we got you the, did the work. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. You got did the work. Done. <laughs> Signed off. Yeah. Took her to her office. She was like, "Good job, Zyler. Oh, yeah. Appreciate it. I'm gonna holler at you. Oh man, they still yanked that mug from me, but yeah, that's what it is. But, but yeah, so I'm, I'm in college, and at that time, I was like, man, show me what I'm supposed to be doing up here, and. I remember, like, the first month went by, psh, nothing. You know, like, first, like, semester went by, psh, still nothing. Still don't know what I want to do. Just in these halls, bro, going to class. And it really was confusing because, you know, I got academically withdrawn in the first semester. What was that? Uh, it's when your professor kicked you out the class. Why? Were because, you not coming to class? No. Okay. And the reason being because, bro, the guy that set up my schedule, yeah, I had... I had a math class at like, I don't remember the exact time, so I'm going to just throw out some times. But I had a math class that went from like 12 to like 115, right? And okay. then I had a personal finance class that started at 1 o'clock. So I'm getting out Not of- Not going to work. Exactly. And he work. made my schedule and was just like, okay, this is going to work. This is cool. Just tell the professor this Bro, is cool. those- Bro, don't even get me started. I already know. Like, they don't care. Their advice it's is like, terrible. What, what are y'all doing? Yeah. And, like, they seem like you're bothering them. Yeah. Like, this is your job. Uh, for Bro, advise me on what I'm supposed yeah, to do this up is, here, bro. Oh, you can really do whatever you want to do. Like, that's not it's what terrible, I can't. I, I didn't email you because of that. Mm. I didn't call you because of that. I called you for advice. That's it. And for you to do this for me. Help I, me. I shouldn't have holds <laughs> on my account Help because me. of you. <laughs> yeah, man. I already know, man. So, like I said, that happened. And like I said, I was still in the high school mode, man. I'm thinking, like, 
oh, you know, me, you know, they're not going to kick me out the class. I'm in this joint for the whole year. My schedule's already been made. It's paid for. Oh, psh, man. <laughs> I was in there for like a, you know, two classes a week. So yeah. I made the second class. She pulled me to the side. I was like, hey, bro, you coming in 20, 25 minutes late every day. What's the deal? And I told her, I was like, what, what happened with my schedule? I told her. And yeah. she said, well, email me the schedule and we'll try to get it worked out. Monday came around, bro. And I come back to class and she was like, I didn't see that uh, you didn't email me over the weekend. Could you email me today? I said, mm, I got you. I got you. Did you? Didn't email her. Why not? Bro, Wednesday come around. I'm trying to walk up to the class. I look at my schedule. Academically withdraw. Why didn't you email her? Bro, I told you I was still in the high school mode, bro. Thinking that emails didn't really matter. Like, Bro, that ate people up yeah, that first semester. It killed me, bro. It killed me. And luckily, I was in that, that uh, educational planning class. Mm -hmm. That taught us the importance of emailing your professor. Yeah, and you got to do it that, professionally. Bro, after that, I never missed the ball, bro. Like, when it came to emails, I never missed the ball after that. Right. But Some people learn. she academically withdrawed me. And then I tested out of that math class. That I, I could have tested out of that math class and kept that personal finance class. But I didn't know at the time. So I took the, my placement test, man. Tested out that math class. And this is all in the first semester, bro. So now I'm in, I'm in the first semester. I'm down to two classes. So I take two classes the next semester, and I think the next semester that I end up taking like one class. Like I'm barely still in college right now, bro. Yeah. And I'm still asking God every day, like God, what am I supposed to do? I need clarity, bro. Like I don't know what I'm supposed to do in my life. I need clarity, and I'm coming to this. I'm coming to God every single day, like bro. I need answers. I need answers. I need answers. I need answers. And the only thing I kept hearing, bro, was just keep going. Just keep going. Just keep going. I was just like. Bro, like I'm talking, about, I'm getting fed up, bro. Like, I, I'm burning through uh journals, bro, because I'm writing every day in my journal about how I feel and everything. I'm burning through journals, bro, because I'm so fed up and I got so much on my head. Like, bro, I need clarity. I need clarity. I need clarity. And man, I would say the last year, man, probably the last. No, okay. So if I was in there, I was in there for three years. So what would that be? The fourth. The fourth or the fifth semester, one of those semesters, I can't remember which one. The fourth or the fifth one, whatever one. Uh, probably more than that, but whatever. yeah, it's probably it seemed like it, bro. Because like it's two semesters in a year, my guy. Yeah, I know. And that's what I'm saying. I went for three years, so I had six semesters. This is basic math. All right. So, so that's what I'm. I'm trying to figure out which one, it, bro. Right, you try yeah. to come. <laughs> no, it's that's why I was like it was either the fourth or the fifth one. I'm trying to figure out which. You're about, you, okay, man. I don't get you're it. right. You're I'm, right. <laughs> I'm not trying to be right, bro. No, I misunderstood. Oh man, it's cool. It was either the fourth of the semester. Because uh, you said a year before you Yeah, ended. I know. Cause I, yeah, that was yeah. on me. So that was going to be me. like yeah. four. Yeah. Right. So, but like I said, I just kept hearing from God, keep going, keep going, keep going. And I got to the point, man, where uh, like I was, bro, I was dead serious about to drop out. Like dead serious. And for some reason, bro, my sister had came over to my parents' house. I don't even know why she was over there, bro. And she was like, did you enroll for next semester? Because, you know, my older sister was dumb heavy on school. Like, yeah, if you don't go to school, you're not successful to her. But anyway, she was like, did you enroll for next semester? I was like, no, nah, I don't think I, I don't think I'm going. Like, I think I'm done. Mm. Like, done, bro. Like You told the wrong person. Uh, I said, I think I'm done. She well, said, you told the right person. Yeah, pretty much I did. She was like, no, nah, you're not done. She was like, why, why don't you want to go? I was like, man, because I can't decide what my major is, bro. And I was like, I think I'm wasting my time, man. And I was like, you know, I don't even want a job doing this stuff that I'm going to school for. It ain't making sense, you know? Yeah. And she was like, well, what do you want to do? And I was like, well, I like media. I was like, but I don't, want, I don't know what I want to do in media, but I like media. And she was like, well, then take some media classes. And I was like, yeah, I was thinking about that. But I was like, one of the classes on there is public speaking. And I was like, I don't want to do public speaking. Well, public speaking was fun. Man. It was. Very bro. fun. But at the beginning, I was terrified of it. Really? Terrified of public speaking, bro. Like, because she was telling me that. And I was like, I don't want to do media because if you do media, you got to do public speaking. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't want to do public speaking. And she was like, just take the public speaking class. Because, you know, my sister went to school for computer science, bro. I know. And they made her take a public speaking class. Made me take it, too. And she was like, just take it. She was like, it ain't that bad. And I was like, nah, bro, it's going to be terrible. Everybody looking at me. I was like, I don't know what to say. And she was like, man, just take it. So, like I said, God kept saying, bro, just keep. Because even after she said it, I ain't saying, like, I enroll. Like, oh, yeah, I'm going. 
Yeah. I still like went back to God, like, hey God, I still need to know what to do, bro. Like I'm confused. He just said, keep going, keep going. So end up enrolling to that public speaking class, bro, and fell in love. Like fell in love with public speaking, bro. And ain't never like ain't never thought again that I'm not supposed to be speaking. You know what I'm saying? Hence doing all of this stuff now. Like yeah. I've never thought again that I'm not supposed to be speaking. But it all came, man, from like the whole thing of me thinking that I had patience, but I didn't have patience, bro. Because if I, I, I still look back at it now, like, dang, bro, you was going at God every single day on him, every single day. That was nice. Oh yeah, appreciate it, man. You brought that around. Appreciate it, man. I didn't like you surprised me every yeah, time yeah, you it, do it. it. It didn't look like it was happening. It didn't. I forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, so I was like, bro, I thought I, I thought I really had it, but I didn't, man, and. I mean, it was just, like, I know people say universe. I know people say the inner voice. But to me, it was listening to God, bro. Mm-hmm. And it was just being, finally allowing myself to just be still, bro, and be patient. You know what I'm saying? But now I'm at the point now, like what we was talking about at the beginning. Now I'm at the point now, it's like, okay, God, I heard what you want me to do, and I see what you want me to do. I'm reading the word, and I'm listening, man, and I keep seeing these signs, man. And, like, I'm seeing what you want me to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, even this stuff that we doing right now, I do not believe that this stuff just happened by like osmosis, like just came out of the sky and fell upon it. Like I don't believe that. What well, you know, like osmosis? What is it? Let's keep going. <laughs> is that what it is though? Let's keep going. Is that why you stopped though? Hey, let's just keep going. Hey, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Off off camera, I'm gonna ask you what osmosis is. Yeah. But we'll keep going. Oh, okay. All right. But yeah, so I didn't I didn't think <laughs> let's keep going. Oh man. This man did not pay attention in biology at all. <laughs> hey bro, that that was another thing that almost made me drop out, bro. Biology. Oh man, I, I'm so. But thankful. I don't even think Osmo. Ugh, let's not get started. But I'm so thankful. And I remember that. they taught us that in environmental science and in biology. But let's keep it going. Yeah, bro, I just got to be so thankful that I got Mariah, bro, because she she likes science, or at least whether she like it or not, she know how to do it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But me, biology stuff just don't click to me, bro. I'm still trying to understand ATP and ADP and glucose and stuff. It it just don't click to me, but. Anyway, man, like what I was saying, man, so I don't think like this stuff that's happening right now, mm-hmm. I don't believe that this stuff just fell out the sky, just like, oh, do it. Like, I truly believe that this was like intentional, bro, and it's about taking the right action on doing it. So now I'm like, okay, I see it. You know what I'm saying? I see the content that we doing. I see you and me, we being consistent at doing this. So now I'm just like, the whole thing that's killing me now is like, is this right? And on top of this being right, do I have... Do I am I equipped with the right tools to endure to this thing? You know what I'm saying? Endure through this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but the way I look at it is you're saying the tools. Like, what do you mean by the tools? Because it seems like okay, yeah, God kind of he answered you. Yeah, but it's still like to me, it just seemed like. He just dumped a jigsaw puzzle out on the table and told oh, you to sure. put that mug together. For sure. And it's up to you to put the work in to yeah. put that mug together and get it going. Like He mm. gave you, okay, the tools, yeah. but you still got to figure out what these tools are mm. for, how to use them, when to use them. It's just a lot that kind of goes into it, even when you get the answer that you've been wanting for all those years. Yeah. So what do you mean by tools? I mean, it's like it's like this, bro. I'm a, I, said, I told this story on live one time. But it's this story that I read, man. It's not in the Bible. It's just I just read this story, man. But it was talking about uh this man. He kept asking God daily, God, like, I need bread to eat. I need bread to eat. I need bread to eat. Mm-hmm. And God finally answered him. And he gave him seeds. He gave him gardening tools. And he gave him, like, you know what I'm saying, the water to go water the crops. Like, that's how God answered him. So he just kept asking every day, hey, God, I need the, I need bread. I need bread to eat. And God was like, I gave you the tools already. Like, go go grow the bread, bro. Like, grow the wheat and everything and turn it. Like, I gave you everything you need so you can get what you want. Mm-hmm. And that's the way I still see it. Like, these, these are the tools. This is why I'm going to make it more relatable instead of just, like, public speaking and, like, podcasting. But, like, when it comes to, like, me and Rye, 
like I told you, like I cried about that because I was so like, dang, I really want this thing to work and I really want to make this thing to the end. Like I really want to be with her all the way up until like until death do its part. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's what I cried because I was like, bro, am I equipped with the tools to really be a husband to somebody? You know what I'm saying? Or more relatable for everybody, like am I equipped to be a good brother to somebody? Am I equipped to be a good friend to somebody? Am I equipped to be a good son to my parents? You know what I'm saying? Like, am I taking on the true skills that I need, bro, to actually be like good people to these people in my life? You know what I'm saying? Like, am I patient with them? Am I loving with them? Am I like giving them charity? Am I, you know what I'm saying? Actually listening to them. Am I having good communication skills with them? Am I doing the things that make sure that, they see me as somebody that's not just taking from them, taking from them, taking from them. Instead of I'm somebody that's like, oh, when I'm around him, he provides value in my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to make sure every single day that I'm equipped with the tools. And that's what I was talking to you about the beginning. It's like, bro, I stress myself so much because I just want to, like, really, bro, I want to be the best that I can at what I do, bro. And that's not just podcasting. And that's not just a media company that's not just content creation like that's literally like i want to be the best friend i can be you yeah. know what i'm saying to anybody that you can be yeah yeah i want to be the best husband that i can to mariah like i i, I want to do these things and it brings me to tears at times because i want to make sure that i'm equipped to do it but you're asking the right questions already so you it sounds like you already are like, yeah. why why question it because you have to realize like a lot of people don't do that mm-hmm. they're not striving to be the best yeah. They're not they don't think about how can I be the best brother, the best husband, the best this, the best that. Yeah. They're just kind of going through their life. All right, I'm just trying to make it. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I get that standpoint, but for you to say you don't know if you're equipped, like you are. Yeah. Like I don't see why you wouldn't think you are. Well, I mean, it's it's like because you're 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 doing the first thing to get there mm-hmm. is you're saying, "Okay, you're assessing the situation and then you're coming in and you're like, how can I be the best? And you actively pursue it and try to be the best. Yeah. And you realize that you will never be the best. So you're constantly pursuing yeah. being the best. All right, bro. I'm going to go personal for you. Okay. And tell me, like, if I cross the line, just let me know. But it's dealing like what you was talking about earlier about the uh, the Taekwondo. Okay. When you was like, you missed that year and it got to you, right? Yeah. So you see stuff like that is like, that was life, right? Like life happened. Like oh, yeah. Things came up and it yeah. was like, okay. Now I'm not saying the Taekwondo is like, you know what I'm saying, on all the other things. But that's what I'm saying. Like just things like that could happen. Like you want to be good at that, right? Yeah. And life comes up and it happens to you. And it's like, now you back into it, but I'm just like. How do I get to that point, even if I fall down, mm-hmm. to make sure that I get back up and I'm still in the position to where I can still go and I can actively pursue this thing like what you were saying? Again. Yeah. Like after you've already kind of been beaten. Because does that get to you? Are you able to like, okay, I missed that year at Taekwondo. Are you able to like pick back up where you left off or did it? Let me let me did go back to me from the beginning. Like when you stopped doing it, yeah. did it get to you? Like man, I really need to get back to this. It ate me up inside. Like I could be a whole belt higher right now. I could yeah. be a purple belt about to go on to get my brown belt. Yeah, but I miss so much time. It eats me up inside because like, but then again, it fuels me to be even more because I got to make up time. Yeah. So it just depends on who you are as a person. But yeah, it got to me for sure. But I realized, like, in that moment, and it wasn't just the Rona that kind of took it away from me. It mm-hmm. was a lot of personal stuff that you knew about that I just had to, okay, For this sure. is what matters. So, in a way, yes, it ate me up, but I knew that I didn't stop because, oh, I'm, I just want to chill and watch mm-hmm. anime. I stopped for a reason because I got I to gotta take care of business. Yeah. So, it was like a, it was bittersweet. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, I'm stopping to take care of business on some grown man stuff. And that's yeah. great. But I still needed that outlet. Like, man, I want to go train. And I didn't have my own place or nothing, so I couldn't train at the house. I don't mm-hmm. have no room. So it was just kind of like me withering away. And it was like, it was, it ate me up inside. And it still kind of bothers me now when I go to class and I see people who are like the same rank as me. And I'm like, man, I could be in a higher belt. I could be in a more advanced class now mm-hmm. if this, this, and this didn't happen. But 
it taught me so much about like going through all that about gratitude and just being grateful. Mm. So I, I only look at it like that. I'm just so grateful. Like, okay, for the sure. situation that I had to stop for, good now. And like now I can come back to do it and there's nothing in my way anymore. Mm. And I can train as much as I want now. Yeah. So I just look at it like, okay, are you in the camp like everything happens for a reason? Yeah. Yeah. That's how I look at it. Like, everything that happened, happened for a reason. Mm-hmm. And I just got to learn the lessons that I learned and keep it pushing. And like, yeah, when it does like bother me, like, ah, oh, man, I could, I could be this, I could be that, I could be that. It's just, you just kind of got to realize like that don't even really matter. Yeah. Because you're going to get it eventually. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about that earlier. Like a lot of stuff that I would complain about in the past, like, oh, I want it now. I want mm-hmm. it now. And it's like, looking back on it, bro, why was you tripping on waiting a day? Yeah. Waiting two days. Mm-hmm. Because, like, all these months now, you're looking back on it and you have it. Like, you wasn't even tripping off that no more. Yeah. And you were stressing yourself out crazy because you had to wait a day. You had to wait two days Mm -hmm. because you wanted that instant gratification. It's just kind of like having to stop Taekwondo made me realize, like, oh, life can come at you and you got to pump the brakes and you got to be able to adapt. Mm -hmm. And for a minute there, bro, I, I wasn't doing too hot. Yeah. I was a mess. And it was just kind of like I didn't really have any kind of outlet to kind of that I felt to kind of turn to to let go of that. Mm -hmm. So it was just a lot to handle. But now looking back on it, like, okay, that definitely made me stronger having to go through all that. And I get everybody had a pretty rough 2020. For sure. Like everybody had their own little individual rough go at it. And that's kind of how I look at it. Like, okay, you weren't the only one out here struggling. People lost people. I was fortunate enough that I didn't lose anybody. So. Mm -hmm. I just kind of got to look at it like, okay, I'm blessed. Even yeah. though I'm not like a religious person, I can still realize like, okay, I'm a very blessed person yeah. to make it through 2020 with no losses. But, so, yeah. Mm. It just depends, man. But yeah, to answer your question, yeah, it definitely bothered me a lot. Mm. And it still kind of bothers me. Bro, does it ever get to you where you feel like, am I doing enough? It drives me insane. Yeah. It drives me insane. Like, it makes me feel like I'm like, okay, I'm not doing enough, but I'm trying to figure out a balance because I don't want to be the guy who just puts his head down and grinds. Mm -hmm. And then I look up at 30 and I'm by myself. Yeah. No friends, no significant other. So I'm like, right now I'm trying to find a balance between like, okay, meeting new people and dating. But bro, you got to get this writing done Mm -hmm. or you got to go train. Yeah. But then... You introduce relationships, so now like, bro, mm-hmm. you gotta feed this relationship. You gotta make it grow, and it's just like you're not doing enough. Cause like, I'll be so tired, and I'll like take a break, and like I'll hop on YouTube and like watch some YouTube shorts, yeah. and like that little voice in the back of my head, like, bro, you ain't doing nothing. Yeah, you could be doing something. Like, right get now. up. Like, yeah. you could you could use this five minutes to write. Mm-hmm. You can use this five minutes to read that philosophy book that you got. Yeah, and it just it's like, ain't that kind of crazy? Yeah, it is. Like. Man. Sometimes yeah. I just be wanting to kind of like, man, I just want to hop on Reddit for like an hour. It ain't but I realize like you can't do that. You got to mm-hmm. get to work. And it, it kind of helps that I'm passionate about writing. Mm-hmm. But sometimes I'm like, I'm just so tired. I just want to eat, go to bed. But you got to stay up like, oh, I got to work out. Mm-hmm. Because I know if I don't work out, I ain't going to perform how I need to perform when I go train. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like, man, I definitely get when people like, you get no breaks. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to find the balance so I don't should, burn though. out. Oh man, because that was that was my thing, man. Before I got with Mariah, bro, I was just I'm talking about, bro. I had no car, so I was not paying for gas. Mm-hmm. Didn't have no insurance. I helped my mom with my little phone bill, but that ain't much, bro. Yeah. And I was working 40, 50 hours a week. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Getting paid every single week, bro. Living with my parents, so I'm saving all this money, bro. I'm I'm talking about I'm just saving all this money, oh, yeah. just saving and saving, cause I had already got burned just wasting my money on cars, you know. And I was like, oh, I didn't happen again. That's why I was really like not having no car, but I was just saving this money, bro. And I ain't saying like I was up some M's, but I was up a few thousand, you know. Good. what I'm saying? I was sitting nice, yeah. And bro, at the time I didn't think about it because I thought I was doing so well. By saving this money, budgeting, tracking all my expenses, right? I thought I was doing so well. I get with Mariah, and Mariah's like, hey, I'm going to Florida to go see my dad. I want you to go with me. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, well, what I got to do? And she was like, well, you got to buy the plane ticket. I was like, okay, how much is the plane ticket? 
plane ticket at that time it was like three hundred dollars. Like, That's a couple hundred. Yeah, especially because we was going in December. So, but it was three hundred dollars to go out there. So I was like, okay, bet, bro. We went to Florida. Mm-hmm. This was my first time on a plane, bro. Just, Wicked. just, just getting ready to get to the airport mm-hmm. was changing my perspective, bro. Then when we got on that plane because we flew to Dallas and then we flew to Fort Lauderdale. But getting on that plane, bro. That mug take off? Bro, that thing opened up my eyes so much, right? It opened up my eyes so much. And what I was thinking was, I was like, bro. Now, I'm not discounting Mariah, but, you know what I'm saying? Because now I'm, I'm with her. But I was like, bro, you was single. Saving all this money living with your parents. You know how many vacations I could have went on, bro? I could have went on so many vacations, but I had that thing in my head was like, bro, you can't take no days off. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you literally don't have time to be taking days off, bro. You could be doing so much more because I was you gotta so, get this bread. so heavy on it, bro. Because yeah. I was so, yeah, at that time, I was like, I ain't going to lie. I was living in fear of not having enough at retirement. So I was so heavy on trying to save money, put it in the stock market. Save money, put it in the stock market. Save money, put it in the stock market. You know what I'm saying? Or just save it and make sure when my investments get, whenever I want to figure out what I want to do, I got the money lined up so I can take advantage of those investments. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That I didn't even give myself a break to be like, bro, you know how much you, like. You got to enjoy life. Man, Because, like, you're going to look up, you 60. All right, it's time to retire. Yeah. You only got 20 years left. Yeah. So, that, yeah. That's why I was like, when you, when you was like, I can't even watch YouTube without feeling bad. I was like, bro, I felt that the other day. I was like, shit, I can't even be on TikTok without feeling bad, bro. Because I'd be like, bro, you could have had the video edited. You could have yeah. posted a video, bro. You bro, that's a whole nother page. That's a I'm, thousand words you just yeah. wasted, bro. I'm just like. Oh, bro, I don't... sometimes now, I, I got to tell myself, like, bro, Zyla, you got to relax. Yeah, you got to relax, bro. Now, I understand we can't over relax. For sure. Like, we're just doing nothing at all. But sometimes we, at the same time, we can overwork. Yeah, but because, you know like, saying? when you put, like, what we do in a week, we do a lot, a lot. of stuff. Yeah. And it, and it's still like, I got I got three extra hours I could be putting work into. Uh-huh. But it's like, nah, man, you could just chill out. Yeah. Put your feet up. Yeah. Take a nap. Mm. But yeah. Then, see, even, and then it's like this, even on this end, bro, that I don't feel like I'm doing enough at times. Because it's like, okay, so we'll, uh, and it ain't that Mariah pressured me to do it. But I told you, like, I, I literally, bro, I'm trying to, like, I want to be a good example of a husband. I want to be a good husband to her. Mm-hmm. So, like, the dishes will be dirty. You know, we just got done cooking. We yeah. just got done eating. And it's late. And I'm ready to just, like, hey, bro, let's Call take a shower. Night. Call it a night. You know what I'm saying? We'll figure this out tomorrow. And, <laughs> man, she'll be like, so you're not going to do the dishes? I'll be like, nah, nah, we can get this done tomorrow. You know, we'll be all right. We'll just yeah. get it done tomorrow. Ain't, like, ain't nobody coming over tomorrow. Like, the dishes in the <laughs> sink. They in the sink, bro. We'll get them clean. And she's like, well, you can go to bed. I'm going to stay up and do the dishes. Can't do that. Bro. Can't so if that. I go take this shower and get to bed, you're not, a trap. Bro, I'll be asking her sometimes. I'll be like, so you're not going to trip if I just go get in the shower and go to bed? Don't do it. No, nah, no, nah, go ahead. I'll do the dishes. You didn't want to do them it. anyway. Sound like you did it. I'll be like, okay. <laughs> oh, I have before. But it wasn't like it wasn't like with the dish. It was other things. Like I, yeah. I went with what I said was right. Like, oh, yeah, bro, I'm going good. home. Like, yeah, I'm good. You said you good? I'm All right, man, go away. I'll go my way. And But now I find myself like, Doing the dishes at night with her, and I'll look up like, damn, bro, we've been doing these dishes for a minute. And then, you know, then you do the dishes, then you're like, okay, we got to clean the countertops, then we got to sweep the floors. Mm-hmm. Then we, I'm like, all right, Mariah, like, I love you and all. Like, it'd be, sometimes I'll be like, hey, bro, hey, let's go to bed. So I'll just grab it, be like, bro, we're going to bed. I know we need to clean the floor right now, but we're going to have to get this done tomorrow because we over, like, we overdoing it. And that's in good Samaritan type stuff. Like, that ain't nothing like, damaging like we actually getting something done bro yeah. but then it's like am i doing enough because i want mariah to be satisfied you know mariah want the house to be clean yeah but then at the same i'm like am i doing enough because i could have done the dishes before and she could have already been satisfied but i'm like should i beat myself up about stuff like that when i'm just like we could have literally just done that tomorrow and you would have been just as pleased as you are right now you know what i'm saying yeah I I get both points. It depends. It depends on the time because like there's a lot of people who are in the camp of why put off today or like why put off to tomorrow sure. when you can do today sure. that type of thing. I understand. And it's just like because mm, I I get where you're coming from. Yeah. Like, yeah. I can do them dishes in the morning. Yeah. But then that morning come through, 
you got other stuff come yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. So I, the dishes, man, that's like a that's a funny one, man. This is an ugly one at that. Oh, man. Because, like, they gon- they're not going they're anywhere. They're not going anywhere. <laughs> they're not- nobody is coming over here to do them, bro. But I didn't mean it like that. I just mean yeah. they're not going anywhere. So yeah. you're going to have to do them eventually. Yeah, they're not. Like, but they're going to keep piling up. They are. They are, for sure. But the the thing about it is, it's like, I'm just saying, like, sometimes I feel like I'm not doing enough, bro, because I want to, I want to satisfy Mariah so much, you know what I'm saying? And that's why, like, what you were saying, like, I'm going right because I want to be a good friend. I want to be a good husband. I want to be like all that. Even on on the sense, bro, like with you coming over here, it's times like, like Mariah's big on cleaning the house, but I'm I'm big on like, bro, I, when people come over, like I want to be able to cook for them. You know what I'm saying? I want them yeah. to have something to eat. That's why like every time like you be coming over, I'm like, bro, are you eating now? Are you eating before? That's why I was like, bro, just chill. Like you don't have to cook for yeah, me when nah, I come bro, over like, here. That's, that's what I'm saying because I'm on this whole thing like, Want to be a good friend. Want to be a good son. Want to, you know what I'm saying? Like, and at times I feel like I'm not doing because I'm. I, I don't know. One thing, bro, is maybe I need to do this with all things, but I've never set a benchmark for it. You know what I'm saying? I've never set a goal for it. So there's nothing that I'm. I'm Wait, really, a goal for being a good friend. You know what I'm saying? To where but you know when like, a benchmark needs something tangible. You can't. There's nothing tangible of like being a good friend. And that's what I'm saying. So when do you stop? When do you? You finally don't. You keep it? going. But that's what I'm saying. Like when do you get to be like, okay, I'm not overdoing it and I'm not underdoing it right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that I'm setting the bar low, but like that's what I'm saying. At this, like me trying to satisfy Mariah, that I could be up 24 hours a day trying to do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just trying to go and go and go and go and go and do that. Same if I was trying to be the best son, the best brother, whatever. Even if I'm trying to be the best content creator I can be. There has to be like a goal or a benchmark that you got to set to know like, okay, I'm overdoing this or I'm un- like, you go to work, you work 40 hours. That's the benchmark. Because if you go over 40 hours, now you in overtime because you're doing more work than what's expected. Or yeah. if you do less than 40, we about to strip your benefits away because you're not doing <laughs> That's you're America not- for you. Yeah. That's America for you. You're not doing enough, boy. 25 hours? <laughs> you think you deserve what? insurance? <laughs> Think you need health care? <laughs> Boy. Well, I know you can't see, but you ain't working enough to get them glasses, man. You no, know we don't do dental <laughs> anyway. We don't care if you work a hundred hours. <laughs> vision? You ain't getting vision or dental. <laughs> Take care of that yourself, man. It's don't crazy, we don't bro. we pay you enough anyway? <laughs> <laughs> like, we raised it to 15. Come on, man. What, what else do y'all want, man? <laughs> Be blue chip companies. Oh my goodness, man! We're, they, we're barely getting by. Oh. <laughs> I had to cut budgets this year, man. Hey, what? But you you don't understand what I'm going through, man. I just saw y'all earnings like, report. Oh my goodness, bro! I just seen like how y'all was giving bonuses out, bro. Yeah, but like, oh, don't y'all do dividends? That means the company is doing yeah. great. Oh yeah, and the stock is rising, bro. So yeah. it's like I don't. I don't get what's going on here, but it's America for you. Man. But but I love America, so I ain't. Oh no, for sure, man. It's nice. Wouldn't rather be nowhere else. Yeah, it's nice, man. But that's the thing, though, man. I'm not because I also say this before we like determine these things. But I also say this, like, I would never want you to make goals your end game. Like my end game is still at the end of the day, bro, to be the best son of God I can be, to be the best son to my parents I can be, to be the best husband to Mariah I can be. To be the best friend that I can to all my friends, right? That's mm-hmm. still the goal at the end. Like, that's the end game. No matter what, that is the end game right there. Now, the goal may be, you know, cooking for Zyla every once in a while when he come over. You know what I'm saying? That may be a goal. You know what I'm saying? Or and that, that you setting that bar a standard, it kind of raises it for everybody around you. Because, like, yeah. when you come over to my house, yeah. you expect for me to cook mm-hmm. at this point. Because, like, you've already cooked for me for so many times, like, you setting your standard on yourself has influenced me for sure. Yeah. And that's in more ways than one on like, not just the cooking, but like when you would tell me about your writing, mm-hmm. like, are you competitive? Like, what you mean? Are you, com- what do you mean? Like, what? I mean, like, are you competitive? I, I, what do you I, I, mean? I thought you were talking about like in writing, like, well, it I don't compet- matter. Are well, you yeah, competitive? I'm competitive? Yeah. Yeah. Like when you would tell me like how much you wrote and I'm like, man, I'm not working hard enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get more writing done. Uh. So I thought like, you was really talking about like, am I going to like writing like competitions? I was about to say they got those. Oh yeah, for real. I'm going to enter in a few. For real? What you mean? I didn't even know they had those. What? Like, what do you do? Like, Google it. Like, how many words per minute? Or like, no, how good no, your story like, is? Like how? Like writing. Like you submit your stories. 
Oh, okay, okay. That makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. Oh, okay. Like, they'll pay you. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm definitely going to want to enter in some. But I've been kind of like in the fence. Like, I don't want to just get, like, if I'm writing some heat, I ain't trying to just give it away. Yeah. So I'm like, they just go by first I'll, prize. Yeah, five hundred dollars. <laughs> then they turn into a million we'll dollar movie. The, yeah, we, we take it yeah, that way. That's yeah. why I'm like, eh, I'm gonna get y'all the throwaways. You just see the contract see that you signed there? Yeah, you, yeah. you signed this in over perpetuity. <laughs> we got this. <laughs> oh so, man. Yeah, but it's a lot of writing contests that you can get yeah. into. I didn't even know that. Yeah, man. But yeah, man, that's I don't know, man. That's why I'm just like, man. I I don't. Know, I never thought about that, bro. Like I've never thought about setting a goal with me and Mariah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I've never even, like, and then even what you were saying, I've never even thought, like, my stuff was influencing you. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? For like, sure. I knew, like, something was being done right, but I didn't think that it was influencing. I just thought, to the point, like I said, because I was just, like, so set on me trying to actually meet this end game that I had set for myself that I didn't even think that. And, I, and now I'm thinking, like, man, am I overdoing it? Because, like, I've, like, Mariah be getting on to me, bro, because I have a hard time. Like, when people come up to me, like, just the other day, bro, Duke, me and Mariah just left Walmart. <laughs> me and Mariah just leave the store, and yeah. we leave the store. We get done. Pay- <laughs> okay, now I get it. Now you get it. All right. <laughs> you know, they not paying us, man. I yeah. didn't mean to put them out there, but it'd be all right. But uh, I said Winco, so it was. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be all right, right you yeah. know. But anyway, so we leave the store, man, and... uh. We just got done shopping for a few things. Yeah. And this dude comes up to me, man. Like, Mariah's already in the car. She already got the car on. She waiting for some... Oh, I had put the stuff in the trunk, and I was coming. And I dropped off the basket. I'm coming back to the car. Mm -hmm. Dude walks up to me. He said, hey, man, I'm from uh, this northern part of Oklahoma. He was like, "Uh, I came down here. And he was like, so, you know, some other stuff. And I'm trying to get back home. All right? He was like, I just need a little bit of gas money, brother. And I was like, well, man, I was like, I don't have no cash, man, so it had to be on car. He said, oh, no, that's no problem. I'm just parked right over there. We, and I was like, all right, man, we can go to the, the gas station right over here, man. And, you know, me and Mariah, with, with our finances, we won. So normally when it comes to any expense, like, I consult with her to be like, hey, do you agree with me making this purchase? And then she'll do the same for me. So I didn't even consult with her. Didn't I mean, even, how much gas money this dude want? I mean, I, mean, I just gave him ten I, bucks. You know what I'm well, saying? I was thinking about much. five. I th- you can go five in a tank. Well, that's what that's was my thing at first was five. That's what I was gonna do, man. But then I got over there and they like something hit me. It was like, man, give this dude at least ten, man. Cause I think he was expecting the full boy. Like, hey, all right, it put my card in. Click. All right, man. I'll see you later, man. Nah, <laughs> nah, man. nah, man. I put so I was like, hey, man, get ten on whatever pump he was on. And I got in the car and I said, hey, Mara, I'm sorry, man. Like, I didn't even uh. I should have talked to you about that before I just said I'll do it to him. Yeah. But I have a hard time. Like, Mariah, like, I put Mariah, like, are over. About, are we talking about saying no? Saying, like, just know the charity work, bro. Because, like I said, one of my things is, like, I want to be the best. And, like, I, I've never said you grew up on the east side. Yeah, I know. That was training. Yeah, yeah, I know. You should be used to saying no. No, 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 no. no, no. People no. come up to my car on the corner. Nah, bro. Nah, <laughs> no. but, like, in situations like that, like, I had this one dude, bro. Uh... <laughs> I just one dude, man. I was, I was, I was at the, I was at the store again, man. I'm yeah. leaving the store. Yeah. And uh, I'm in the parking lot driving, man. This, this dude, uh, he just sitting there with his kids under the bench, man. For some reason, man, I pulled over, man. He come over to me, uh, Mexican, hey brother, and uh, asking me all problematic, this. <laughs> right problematic, on, right on top, man. No, no. Why did you use the why accent? Don't you- <laughs> <laughs> hey, Holmes. Hey, Holmes. Don't order let me. Like, what? Oh, yeah, man. Nah, you should hear my, uh, I ain't even gonna do the Haitian one, Robbie. She be like, that sounds terrible. But anyway, man, dude comes up to the car, man. And he asked me, he's like, hey, man, you know, hey, me and my sons are stuck over here. Our car broke down. He was like, we just need something to eat. He was like, do you have some money to give to us? Now, one thing I have learned from the East Side is that you don't give people money. Mm-mm. You don't. You don't do it. Maybe a few coins if they at the door or something, but you don't give them no like you need 20 to pull bucks. Your wallet, nah, your wallet you don't out. do it. You don't do it. So I say, hey, man, look, I'll go over to the McDonald's, man. I'll buy y'all some food, man. He said, oh, okay, man. That's great, man. That's great. So I go over to McDonald's, man, buy some food, bring the food, give it to him. And I go about my way. And Mariah, she was like, bro, you like everybody that comes up to you, you do not have to like 
do this stuff. And like I have a hard time saying no to that type of stuff. I mean, you're a good person, man. Bro, because that's that's what I'm like. But I haven't set a goal on when you overdoing it. Well, if you don't feel like you're overdoing it, you're not overdoing it. Yeah, man. But it's you. It's charity. Yeah. I don't, bro. I nope. I don't know. I'm I'll just, give the charity. Like yeah. I'll donate to St. Jude's. Uh-huh. But like just dudes on the street. <laughs> like, I so hate it for you. You rounded your money up for the St. Jude's. What you mean? When you go to like the restaurants and the store and everything, no, nah, like, bro. Like I make, oh, you I, actually I go made, to like some donations. Oh, bro. okay. Then you really in the game then. Like if I hit on like like some stocks, yeah, I kind of look at that as like paying it forward, you know. Oh, okay. And like you growing up, then. growing up, like we had a teacher at Ridgecrest that was always like big on St. Jude's. So mm-hmm. like that's always hold like a special place. So, like all right, anytime I'm a, on a come up, yeah. I'm gonna donate to St. Jude's. Oh, okay. You in the game then? But like I dude on the like... side of the road, like coming up on me, like hey man, can you do this? Can you do that? I'm I'm overanalyzing the situation. Like, nah, man, you got the bag right there. That's a bag of food right there. I know you're not hungry. Yeah. I'm not finna just give you some money. It's just kind of like, eh. I'm not saying I ain't never did it because I've done it before. Yeah. But like, it got to feel right for me. Because mm-hmm. I don't ever want to do sure. something if it don't feel right. For sure. Because if I do give you this money and I didn't want to, I'm basically giving you cursed dollars because mm-hmm. I didn't want to give it to you. Yeah. But like, the spirit moves me, you know, like, all right, bro, mm-hmm. I'll give you five. Cool. Yeah. But. Nah, I'm not like oh, every time I see every time you see one. For a minute, man, it was like that, man. I had this one lady, man. But that's good though, because yeah. like you gen- is you're genuinely doing it. I want to do it, bro, and that's the thing though. But I'm just like, okay, so it, it's. I don't want to say that this lady like burn me. Now I just look at it wrong, but so we was at Penn Square one day, right? Mm. Yeah. Why are they up there at Penn Square? Huh. They up there at Penn? Oh, bro, this this was... We up there at Penn, man. This lady, her car broke down, right? It's always broke down. Oh, man. It's, so her car broke down, and we had a... Uh, I was driving. It was me and Mariah, and I was driving, and I stopped. I said, hey, man, everything all right over here? And they was like, yeah, Ooh. we just... Yeah, they was like, yeah, we just ran out of gas, and they was like, we just need some gas money, man. We got a pump, and I was like... I was like, uh, okay, man, uh, I'll tell y'all what. I'll go down here. I'll turn around. And uh, cause they had the gas can. I mm-hmm. said, "Give me the gas can. Mm-hmm. I'll go to the gas station, fill it up, and bring it back to y'all." I said, "What type of gas y'all need?" They said, "No, no, 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 no. We just, we just need the money." Oh, really? Oh, yeah. You know, bro. I'm dead. I was like, "Okay, all right, y'all have a nice day," and drove off. I said, "Bro, I literally offered like to use my gas in the car that I was driving. Yeah, take this gas and go fill it up with the money I had, and go fill it up for y'all yeah. and bring it back." Yeah, and it was just like a little five gallon thing, but still, like I'm like, bro, like, and they was like, no, 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 no. we just need the cash. They, we'll they, do it. They scamming. I was like, okay, that's bro, why I'm, I'm like, about, I'm up out of here, bro. I want to know where my money going. Yeah, I'm up out of here, bro. So, and that you know, what I'm saying I'm just like at a point, bro. Like that's what I'm saying. Everybody's not in it for like, right? Like they may be coming up to you like, and they's like, ah, oh, dang, you know, he put some gas in my car. Dang, I really need the money. I had gas in this joint already. Yeah, you know that's what I'm that's your fault. Yeah. So if you would have just been one hundred, like, hey, can I get a couple bucks? Yeah, you would have got it. That's why I'm just like, yeah. Mariah was like, yeah, okay, so we can keep doing it, but you know, what I'm saying, at times, man, you got to like, you know, what I'm saying, you still got to like, you can't just let people keep running. You drive running. Yeah, you can't. Drive. You can't be out here getting played. Yeah, for sure, man, for sure. Because that's one of the biggest. Things. That's what I'm saying. You can overdo it. Because you may be like, hey, look, bro, I got a charity budget. You know, what I'm saying, I know people may not like to hear that, but hey, I got a charity budget, and we actually do, bro. Yeah, me and Mariah actually have a charity budget. Yeah. We hardly touch into it because it's like, I mean, ain't people like, every day people ain't just coming up to me like, hey, brother, can you help me out? Yeah. It ain't every day. But like when it does happen, I tell her, hey, Mariah, I gave this dude 10 bucks. Take it out the charity budget. You know what I'm saying? And, but it's like, in that sense, if I have no budget, what? I was thinking about about our boy, uh, Mr. Mr. Chong. Mr. Chong? Yeah. Just think on it. Cause we ain't said his name. If I'm thinking, I don't think we're talking about the same Chong. Pictures, man. Photography. Oh, Mr. <laughs> Chong. <laughs> you stupid. You stupid. I like put it together. I thought you was talking about <laughs> I'm thinking like high school, like dang, we have a teacher named Mr. Chong. I think we did. I was like, we did. No, that's what I was thinking of. I was like, nah, man. What did Mr. Chong do about charity? <laughs> uh, was he out there giving to the homeless? It seemed like Mr. Chong dipping into the charity, but oh yeah, he definitely was, man. Boy, 
Yeah, man, that's it's a story for another time. Oh my goodness, I thought it was we was about we was closer, but psh, yeah, man. but <laughs> Mr. Charm. <laughs> Mr. Charm. Oh man, but no, nah, man. So that that's what I'm just like I. To me, I think, man, that we should all have goals that we set for ourselves that we want to achieve. It's, it's no different than you and Taekwondo. Imagine if you were just showing up to class, bro, and you was just in there working. You know what I'm saying? No like, I, I just want to be good at this. And it wouldn't be like, uh, what was the name of it? You wouldn't have no, uh, no what? Meet days, challenge day, what was it? Rank test. Rank testing. You wouldn't have no rank testing. Imagine if you had no rank testing. And you just going in there like, dang, I want to be the best. So then when your, when your instructor call you back at the class, there is no like, oh, we need to go another 30 minutes to make sure you get this move down. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? There is no like, oh, no, it's just we can keep going and going and going and going and going because it's really nothing that we aiming for. Yeah. Instead of saying like, oh, no, you got a rank test. You no need purpose. To be, yeah. You, you need to have a purpose over why you're doing it. This is your rank test coming up. You need to be ready for that coming up. Yeah. So it's no different than your goal. Hey, bro, you know, if you said that your goal was to do these things, as long as you achieving that goal, bro, then you within the ball game. You know what I'm saying? You're not all out of the ballpark thinking that you're doing the right thing. And I'm like, man, I'm going at this stuff without no goals. It's even with this this content creation, man. It's like, and that's why I get down on myself because I made sure one thing that I wanted to do was I wanted to be posting daily. No matter what that posting may be, it may be a video come out. It may just be a repost of a video, anything. But I just wanted to be posting daily, man. So I try to make sure... You know what I'm saying? And I branched it out now. Now my thing is that I'm trying to be more engaged. Like, whether it's daily or not, just trying to be more engaged. But that kept me from just, like, running, you know what I'm saying, just going, 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 posting video, posting. Because, like, when I first started, bro, I was just posting video, 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 just dropping them joints, dropping them joints. Like, anytime I edit them, just dropping them, dropping them. Not caring what they look like, not caring what they sound like, just dropping stuff, man. And I was like, Ah, bro, I don't know if you can do that, bro. You need to, like, pull back on that, bro, and you need to make sure your stuff is, like, up to the right quality. Yeah. I mean, you can still be consistent, but make sure your stuff is of good quality. That's you my problem. I, won't, I will not put anything out because I want it to be so pristine. Yeah. And then you get to the point where you haven't put anything yeah, out because sure. you're so hell-bent on it got to be right. Mm -hmm. So, But right to who? Exactly. Yeah. To me, I want it to be perfect but it'll never be perfect mm -hmm. and that kind of goes back to earlier when i was saying I, I, you got to find a balance yeah and the same thing you talk about you got to find a balance on okay what's too much what's not enough you got to find what you were saying like a benchmark mm -hmm. and it's, it's just how do you find that it just seems like every time i'm like okay i'm trying to find a balance either i'm overdoing it yeah and i'm like bro you're pretty tired or I'm underdoing it, and it's like, dude, you get up, you're lazy. Yeah, like you could be eating and doing this right now. It's just trying to find a balance. I was thinking like you were talking about the Instagram. I'm like, I haven't even touched my Instagram since I made it because like I'm still planning out. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is what I want my profile picture to yeah. be. This is what I want my bio to be. This mm -hmm. is what I want my first post to be. When I should just be on there, just be on there. Yeah, just be actually on there. jumping in. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, bro. The thing just, is like, it's like man, we had that. Uh, I think the last video that we dropped, man, uh, at least from what you listen at this point, whatever video that was, uh, I think it was episode 15. But anyway, at the beginning, uh, you had said, okay, I'm recording. And I didn't cut that out. I put that in the video. Like, I wanted to put it in there. And you said, okay, I'm recording. And then I started. When, you know, I, I don't know if other people do it, but they'll cut that out and they'll start right at the beginning when I say, hey, this is the Be Easy Show. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I left that in there. Because to me, I feel like that was more authentic. You know what I'm saying? I disagree. Yeah, see, you know, and that's the same thing with Mariah. Mariah was like, why did you leave that in there? And I was like, man, because I feel like it was I more. I want to be raw. Yeah, I, that's what I was like. I was like, I feel like it's more authentic. I said, Mariah, that's like, to the extent, that's kind of the beauty about podcasting. Because it's not like TV, you know what I'm saying? It's not like all like crisp and clean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We. We don't have suits on right now. We don't. The lighting needs work. Yeah, like, We're planning on everything like, <laughs> how to get this work right. The lighting is like, bro, we discussing like, plans over the podcast on the podcast. Yes. <laughs> so but it's like I get what you're saying. Like that just that rawness to it. Yeah. It does have a, a, a an appeal to yeah. it. Yeah. But bro, did you hear that? Yeah. No, that was me. 
What are you doing? That was me. That was my knuckles. You oh, see stuff like this. Bro, I was like, what is just, that? What's going on? I already yeah, hear the locust outside. Yeah. Not the locust, but the cicadas. Yeah. The mother's just going. Yeah, I know. Bro, we I probably know. should wrap up. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I, I seen the time. Yeah, man. I seen the time. But that's the thing, though, man. I was thinking of this. I don't know if this is deep or not, but it sounds good in my head. But I was thinking of you should set goals, man, that satisfy you and not saturate you. Ah, I thought I hit it. <laughs> I thought I hit it. But pretty much you should set goals that satisfy you, man. And that not like they don't run you dry and they don't feel you like you left in too much in the tank. You know what I'm saying? Like they satisfy you and they make you happy. That should be, you know what I'm saying? And then sometimes like people may not, not they might not be pleased. Mariah may not be happy that I went to sleep without doing the dishes. But I feel good because I made her dinner. I brought her to dinner. I put her show on. And... I'm going to have the bed ready for and everything. So when she want to go to sleep, you know what I'm saying? So just come lay down. I was satisfied with that. I may have messed up here or there, but like, that's okay. In baseball, you strike out a few times, but you didn't strike out every time, you know? Yeah. So I got what you're saying, bro. Your bar wasn't bad, man. It's yeah. Just, I mean, I, I feel you. We can it was, polish it up. Yeah, a little bit. for sure. Yeah. I'll get it down. Not everything I say is nothing I say be crisp. So <laughs> we'll get it down, man. We'll be out here swinging. <laughs> <laughs> hoping to make contact man boy hoping to make contact but All yeah man through. we're gonna have to wrap this up man so y'all y'all already know what it is man this is the be easy show man we coming out with topics every single episode man helping you live your life easier man this is coach willis man and zala himself on this thing man we are on apple podcast i know we're on spotify and these other things and if you're on there man subscribe you know what i'm saying give us a rating on there but for sure on apple Podcasts and youtube man subscribe like comment man and share if you may not need it but somebody else may need it man so if there's no other words man this is the be easy show man y'all be easy peace